Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. One practice prevalent among governors in Nigeria is the abandonment of projects initiated by their predecessor in office, even when to, they belong to the same political party. But you should remember, every abandoned project is abandoned governance. In spite of the achievement of Ambode as governor in Lagos State, it is a notorious fact that he abandoned most of the projects initiated by Governor Fashola, his predecessor in office, and started a completely new set of projects the Maitu to Kokomaiko Road, the railway from Maitu to Marina, the Lubiri housing scheme just by the foot of Todd Mellon Bridge in Adeniji. All these are cases that readily come to mind. Governor Sonwolu also seems to be following in the same trajectory by abandoning most projects Ambode initiated, but both share the same platform and the same ideology. Otherwise, how can one explain that since May 2019, when someone Lu was sworn in, he has not continued with the opening up of the waterways transportation already initiated and started by Ambody's government. With the dredging of the Badagri water channel to Ebuto Yojo, since the former governor had executed the dredging of the Ebuto Yojo to CMS as east of the channel. This is considering the hardship residents and commuters in that area face daily on the dead trap called the Okokomaiko to Badagri Road that I talked about last week coupled with the snail speed approach of the rehabilitation work on the same road, despite the fact that the Minister of Works, Babatunde Raji Fashola, is a former governor of Lagos State. And even the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Femi Bajabi Amila, is also from Lagos. And then the Vice President also was an Attorney General in Lagos. Ambode concluded the survey of the dredging of the river from Badagri to CMS, and had actually dredged same from Ebuti Ojo to CMS. I was to commence the dredging of Badagri to Ojo by 2020. But unfortunately, it's Ambode, so the current government had abandoned the project for reasons best known to them. Why are we so fixated on just road construction in an aquatic state like this in Lagos? That's my question. When government can create alternative means of transportation by dredging most of the water's channels, what would it cost the government to dredge Marina to Oyimbo, for example, or Marina to Ekpe? Considering the fact that the road from Ekbe or Lego, Aja to Ekbe is not occadarable, not even the talk of motorable, according to my friend Adeniji Bosharo. In the current state of the Badagri Road, it takes seven, six to seven hours to travel from Badagri to CMS. It will, however, take just one hour by boat to do the same journey. So why is government only interested in creating that multiple channel of transportation when it will take only about two months to dredge the same channel. I wish I know the answer. I be you know, you let us know. I would therefore advocate that Lagos State being an aquatic state, the government can effectively decongest the road and ease movement if only it will, in, it will invest in inland waterways. Not only is it cheaper, but it's less costly to maintain. It makes carriage of bulky load easier. Also, transport for foreign trades and contributes to decongestion and over overloaded road network in densely populated regions like Lagos. No matter the misunderstanding between a governor and his predecessor in office, once you share same political belief and party, it is imperative that you continue the good infrastructural work already started by your predecessor in office for the benefit of the state and all. After all, now who commissioned project nine builder. So what would you want to be remembered for? What would you 
would you want to be remembered for? What will our parties, our major political parties, be, want to be remembered for? What, it's not of our business if you have personality clashes within your, within your party. What we want to see is that you have put forth this candidate from your party. We have voted for your party so that this candidate can work. And if this candidate leaves after he's scheduled your term and you put somebody else there, we, we expect that the party should continue. All this, it, I think it's, it's, it's so petty and it's so retrogressive for a party to watch as individuals undermine their own bigger picture and vision. And it's about time, 60th anniversary, it's about time we stopped all of this pettiness in governance. No. So we tell in Lagos, and it's, it's the model state in Nigeria, no matter where you want to argue it from. This is what I this think. This should stop. Yeah, this is what I think that uh, the State House of Assembly should address. Mm. Because it is now a, an issue in the states, and the people are the worst hit. So the lawmakers, the National Assembly, the House of Assembly of Lagos State, should come up with a legislation that will ensure continuity of projects. Because when you have a law and a governor uh, violates that law, even though he cannot be taken to court because of immunity, right. he, can, he can be prosecuted after his tenure. But we must have a legislation that will ensure that if a governor has started a good job and then the state has approved of that job, the next governor or the incoming governor should also take on that project and execute it accordingly. Until we do that, we do you know which uh, reminds me? Don't we have opposition at all in, in this state? Not at all. It's twenty oh, no, over twenty. Have opposition it's in Lagos State. Lagos State. Lagos State. Lagos State. Lagos State. Lagos engineering, engineering school, they used to teach us, uh, that you would apply from first, there's something we call first principle. In other words, you want to go to the root cause. Now, the root cause of this problem is as a people, we don't have a vision, mm. right? And then the process that we use to select our leaders is faulty, right? The, self, uh, the process is centered around, you know, your ethnic. Now we do, um, what do you call it? Uh, rotation. Is it? Uh, yes. Uh, What's it called again? Water system. Water system. It, it's from the southwest, and then you move to the north, and then it mm. goes on. We're not paying emphasis on competence. Mm. What process are we putting in place, right, to choose the right people that will follow? Because aside from having a representative from APC who would be governor, that person has to come and sell to us what policies or what projects, how do you intend to govern the state? Then we'll tell you that you must continue what Ambode or what a social person has done. You can't abandon this project. And that way we can now hold them accountable. But we don't have this process. Nigerians have been excluded from all of this process. So all we do is keep going after individual lapses like this. We need to have a process where we can demand from our leaders. We'll tell them before they get there. This is how we want you to, this is what we expect from you. And we're going to hold you accountable because if you don't do that, after four years, you'd not have another term. So we need to have that process where the most capable person, not because you're from the north or you're from the south, no, competent people should be holding positions and people that align with the vision and aspiration of, of, of the but, country but, but, but or, yeah. or the people of that country. But quickly, so that's uh, where maybe, I think maybe we've before Jumoke, um, you fight for me. How can we be in Lagos and we do not have alternative means of transportation? I mean, Ambode built the Bariga jetty, yeah, commissioned it, but now the Lagos state government had refused to open up Bariga to Marina jetty, so that you know you is now imagine having it's infantile. If you have hmm. if you have big vessels from Bariga, I just drive into the vessel and then mm. I don't have to wait whether they are opening or closing Todd Milan Bridge. Yes, you know, I just cross you. and I pay mm. and, you know, yeah, so when you do all of these things, I talked about the road from Badagri to um, CMS. CMS. Do you know that it will take you hours. one month to, or two months to dredge that road? That channel. He said, that channel, instead of having to, for 12 years now we've been constructing that road, do you know that you would have years. taken a lot of traffic off the road? Off the road. By channeling that, uh, 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 dredging that uh, uh, channel, and then create proper uh, uh, um, inland waterway transportation there, mm. and then we say we are poor, we are looking for money. This alternative way, um, CMS to Ekpe, mm. 
Mm. Fantastic route. The road now, as I speak to you, is not a Kadari road. Not to talk about <laughs> 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 right after, <laughs> after um, what's it called? After Aja, you begin to see how not a Kadari road it is. Mm. Two yeah. quick things. We as a people would say that um, the new governor or president hasn't done anything of their own. They're just finishing projects started by their predecessor. I remember us talking about the railway from Kaduna to Abuja and the international airports in Abuja. That the president is just finishing President John um, projects again how do you abandon projects if it is already paid for someone comes in and makes a project ongoing how does he stop it i don't understand he just they doesn't go there understand. anymore like, that's his own sedu said um, it's a um, uh, big lack of vision but well all we're saying is pointing alternative ways to our government in the best possible way we can now let's hear from you on how you've pointed the way for us Olu Yemisi that that speaks on my uh, uh, last week's advocacy. She says, hmm, show me one good road in Lagos, Seth. Suffering and smiling has become the slogan of the masses. My dear, now so we see him. Ogen Job of Vivian also says, thank you so very much for this wake up call. Buari hates the South and prefers Niger Republic. If not, why constructing railway to link another man's country if he's not from there? <laughs> and no laugh. -o. <laughs> Thank you, Organized Job of Vivian and Oluya Misidada. We appreciate your participation with us on our conversation. Continue to advocate with us on our social media platform on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG, and on Twitter and Instagram, at Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, just simply go to plustvafrica.com for slash The Advocate. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. After the break, Evan speaks on Nigeria and their Ogogoro cocktail. I laugh, I can't wait to hear that. <laughs> five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually worked. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you.